we're talking about leadership and influence. One thing that we know is that leadership is often defined as influence. So today we're gonna to talk about four tenets for um, influence and negotiation. Sometimes people feel like they could fine tune their negotiation skills a bit, so we're gonna talk about that. I wanna give you an example. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I was out for a jog. There's a woman who was approaching me. She took out her earbuds. She gave me that look of, uh, we know each other, and I, but I thought, I don't know her. She took her earbuds out, then she just had a really friendly and optimistic interaction with me, really quick, just like that, where she said, have a great day. And after she passed by, it stuck with me because it was out of the ordinary. And what it did for me is it really impacted my next hour, perhaps even my whole day, of just feeling like it is a great day. It put me in this positive mindset. So I'm sharing that with you to remind you that each one of us, we are all tidal waves of influence. I know that's a funny way to think of it, but we are influencing one another in every moment, whether we want to or not. When you hear that, if it makes you feel guilty because there are some people either that you're influencing and don't like what you're doing, or you had an interaction that you're not proud of, drop the guilt and remember, it's never too late. It's never too late to have positive and respectful influence. So here's what I'm going to encourage you to try, these four things. So the first one is to be clear on your intentions. What are you trying to do? Sometimes when people define influence, they mean I want other people to know I'm right and I want to be in charge. I want them to do it my way. So if that's your intention, you've got to change it because people will sniff that out in a second and they will often resist. So be clear on what you're wanting to do. The second is slow down and seek to understand what they want and why they want it. If you're just pushing your own agenda, you're probably going to start butting heads. Figure out what they want and why they want it. The third is figure out where you agree. Even if you are on polar opposite sides of some issue, there is some area where you agree. You might say something like, you know, I am so glad that we are both so passionate about having a successful project. It's, it's obvious that we both um, have put our hearts into this. That's a way to figure out where you agree. Additionally, you've heard this in terms of sales before, but figure out how to tell instead of sell. It's okay for you to share what's important to you, but share with them why. Not be trying to convince them why their way is wrong, but um, why you really enjoy the thing you do or want to go the direction you do. And the fourth is to brainstorm options together. So let's say they have a few ideas as to how they want to do things. I encourage you to either write them down or if that doesn't work um, because of the situation, maybe it's more of a social situation and writing things down would feel strangely formal, just list. Okay, so what are our possible options? What do you see as um, a different way, a few different ways we can go forward? Even if it's as simple as where to go out to dinner, they share their ideas and you don't tell them why each of their ideas is bad, even if their ideas are terrible. And then you share your ideas, what you think would be viable options. Then you have this objective way to decide together. Here's our list, now how are we going to move forward? And it turns away from being a power play into a creative way to solve this problem. My name is Julie Lancaster with Lancaster Consulting, um, where we know that being a leader takes guts, and I applaud you for the great work that you're doing. If you want to learn a little bit more about how we might help you or, or find some other resources, go on over to lancasterleadership.com. Thanks so much.